Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains in Missouri, USA. Today, we're going to play Amateur Chemist and learn how to clean up circuit boards that have been damaged by leaking alkaline batteries. I'm sure we've all experienced the horror of opening up a piece of NH gear that had the batteries left in it, or had an ICAD battery soldered to the motherboard. These types of batteries have an electrolyte, which is an alkaline, which is opposite of an acid on the pH scale. I'm not a real chemist, and I don't play one on TV, but what do you say we jump right in and see how to clean up this sort of mess? Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this episode. Whether you need a small simple board like this or a larger more complicated design, head on over to PCBWay.com, click on PCB Instant Quote, upload your files, and select from the plethora of options available. PCBWay offers a wide range of products and services, including assembly, stencils, and PCB design. When you have a need for circuit boards, head on over to PCBWay.com and give them a try. As you've probably guessed already, since our batteries are alkaline, we need to use an acid to neutralize it and clean up the mess. Of course, we want to be careful and not use an acid that's dangerous or would be so powerful it would dissolve the whole circuit board. The standard go-to acid comes in the form of vinegar, which is about 3 to 5% acetic acid. I've used this several times in the past and it does work well. Recently, I learned that citric acid was a viable alternative, and it seemed like it'd be worth the effort to set up a controlled experiment to compare the two acids. When I looked for citric acid, I found that it was very easy to obtain anhydrous citric acid in a granular form. You can then dissolve it in distilled water to make a very strong and inexpensive liquid citric acid. Citric acid is also odorless and non-toxic. What I have here is a 40% dilution of citric acid, which will dilute further to match the vinegar for our experiments. You might remember the CE150 that I did a video on recently. This is what enticed me to want to experiment with different cleanup methods. I didn't want to dunk this whole board in vinegar because of the relays and the flex PCB. So I got to wondering about how to make a gelled acid. I mixed equal amounts of vegetable glycerin and vinegar and then applied those to the spots where the corrosion was on the board. The gel stayed in place and while it took four to five hours, it did clean the majority of the black coating from the component legs and even the green crusty stuff from the circuit traces themselves. And while this worked, I didn't have any way to compare how well the gel worked to liquid of the same strength nor any way of comparing the vinegar to citric acid. In order to run a good comparative test, I cut a few coupons of double-sided PCB material and cleaned the surface with Scotch-Brite. I then took apart a dead AA battery and mixed the core with some distilled water and spread it over the PCB blank coupons. The white core of the AA battery is made up of potassium hydroxide and zinc in sort of a paste type consistency. This was mixed with distilled water and smeared on the PCB material. The PCBs were then placed in this plastic container with a lid and put in a warm place. And every few days I added just a bit of water to keep it moist. And while it took a few weeks to start developing this green crusty growth, what really surprised me is that the back of this board developed this lovely black patina in just a few days. 
So what we'll do is clean the goop off the top side of this circuit board, and we'll take a look at both sides of the board to decide which we want to use for our experiments. And it's rather interesting if we compare the top side of the board, which is what had the battery smolts on it, it doesn't look as bad. It's definitely corroded, and there are spots that are worse than others. The spots that were more bare turned a very dark black. And the back side, which was bare, was very black. So I think we'll run our experiments on this black side, which experienced the worst corrosion. Here we're going to start our first experiment. On the left is the vinegar, which is about a 4% concentration. On the right is the citric acid, which is the same concentration. Now this is a 12 hour time interval with one shot taken per second, sped up a thousand percent. So we have 12 hours in the span of two minutes. Enjoy. thought it was pretty interesting how it looked like the vinegar side was going along much faster than the citric acid side. But when it was all said and done, the citric acid side did a much better job and we had a little of the green discoloring in the vinegar over here, suggesting it was doing more damage to the copper. One thing I thought we might do is peel this glue off of here and take a little scotch bright and see how easy it was to clean each side up. There we go. We can still see each side nicely framed by the remaining black corrosion. Got a new little piece of scotch bright here. We'll go over the vinegar side first. I'm just pressing down lightly. And you know it's starting to to buff out the area where it cleared, but it's not doing much on the part that's still corroded. Then we'll try the citric acid side. And that really cleaned up quite nicely. Now this little ghosting effect you're seeing here is where there were some strings of hot glue laying on the board. But uh, judging by this, based on the same strength of acetic acid in the vinegar and the citric acid, I would say the citric acid does a better job. That's quite interesting. I guess now we'll test the liquid citric acid against the gelled citric acid and see which one of those does a better job. Or maybe they'll work the same. Now we've got a 20% solution of liquid citric acid on the left hand side 
and a 20% solution of gelled citric acid on the right hand side. To make the gelled citric acid, I added equal amounts of the 40% citric acid and glycerin. The purpose of the gel is to make the acid more viscous and keep it in place on the circuit board where you need it to do its job. We'll see how it affects the chemical reaction. Well, here is our result after 12 hours of soaking. This was the side with the citric acid mixed with water for about a 20% mixture. And this was a 20% mixture of citric acid with glycerin. And the side mixed with water worked much faster. I don't know exactly why this is chemically speaking. I'm guessing maybe it has something to do with the fact that water has more hydrogen in it and it's more readily available to mix with other things. If that's something you know about, I would sure to love to hear a more technical explanation. And another thing I noticed on this is, you know, the reason I mixed with the glycerin was to make it thicker so it would stay in place, you know, to make it more viscous. But the citric acid was already viscous enough, it held itself in place pretty good uh, to the top of this side. It didn't just run off the edge like you know, happens with vinegar. So I don't think the gel uh, is even a thing that's needed using the citric acid. If we take a look at our first sample piece in here, which was the vinegar compared to citric acid in the same 4% concentration, uh, the citric acid did a better job than the vinegar. It worked faster overall, uh, even though it looked like the vinegar started a little faster, and it did a better job cleaning things. So let's go ahead and pop this glue off of here. We'll just give it a brief touch like we did the other side with the scotch bright. Yeah, you know, the side that was more clean, of course, cleaned off easier. So if you're going back over components with a fiberglass brush or you know, fiberglass pen, brass pen, that type of thing, the side soaked in the citric acid would clean up much faster. I also noticed that you know what did run off on the back of this actually started some more corrosion. So if you leave the acid on the copper too long, you're going to be back in the same point where you're not just neutralizing or cleaning up the damage that was done by the alkaline. You're going to be creating new damage. So after you've got it cleaned, then rinse it off with water, swap it with alcohol, that type of thing. You might be saying, hey Bert, how does this relate to real circuit boards? Well, that's a darn good question. 
Here I've got some pictures I took of the Sharp CE150 as I was working on it. And you notice that the blackness on the leads of the components and the copper through holes are exactly like the blackness we saw on our circuit board. So I mixed some regular vinegar with glycerin about 50-50 and it stayed in place on the circuit board where I needed it. And then every 20 minutes or you know 45 minutes I would brush over it and I added some new from time to time as that dried up. And this took about oh five or six hours to really clean up the legs of things. And I was able to take a fiberglass brush and just go over it real quickly. And it looked really nice. To be clear, what we're talking about here is the type of corrosion caused by alkaline batteries, which are normal alkaline primary cells like double A's, C's, that type of thing, as well as rechargeable alkaline batteries like NICADs and nickel metal hydrides, which are often soldered directly to a vintage computer circuit board. What we're not talking about here is the corrosion caused by leaking electrolytic capacitors. In that case, the electrolyte is an acid, so we need to neutralize it with a base, and we'll cover that in a future video. And while all the devastation that can be caused by a leaking alkaline battery seems really bad, it can be worse. It can be much worse. These are all photos of various Macintosh computers which use a non-rechargeable lithium battery as a memory backup. When these things start to leak, it's like Chernobyl inside your computer. It will not only melt through all the components, it'll also eat away the computer case itself. It's catastrophic. If you have any of these computers that have these lithium primary cell batteries in there, take them out immediately. In chatting with Adrian from Adrian's Digital Basement, he said the only thing he's found that's helped mitigate any of the damage caused by these types of leaking lithium batteries is WD-40. It seems to break up some of the corrosion, but the damage is still usually fatal. Well, I hope you found this video useful. When we have damage to our circuit boards from linking alkaline batteries, we can use chemicals such as vinegar and citric acid to neutralize the mess that's left behind. And then we can clean that area with some water and then some isopropyl alcohol to, well, at least make it better than it was and allow us to fix the damage. Well, for comparison purposes in this video, we left our sample coupons undisturbed for several hours. In actual practice, you'd want to use a small brush to brush over the area as the chemical's doing its job. This will break things up and allow it to work a little faster. You can then go over the area with a little pin like this. This one has brass bristles. This one has fiberglass bristles. You can buy a set of these on Amazon pretty inexpensively, and that'll help polish up everything after the chemical's done its job. In the near future, we'll do a separate video on neutralizing circuit boards after you've had capacitor leaks. Now, as I mentioned before, the electrolyte in a capacitor is an acid, so we need to use an alkaline or base to neutralize that. So we'll take a look at some household chemicals we might be able to use for that purpose. I'd like to thank everyone on Twitter who sent me images of boards they've had destroyed by leaking batteries. That really helped out a lot with this video. And it shows what a common problem it is. So if you've got old gear, get the damn batteries out. I'd like to take a moment to say thanks to the folks who help support the channel through Patreon and other means. If you'd like to find out some more information about that, just look in the description down below. There's some links there. Appreciate everyone watching the videos and subscribing. If you're not a subscriber yet, well, what are you waiting on? If you look down below, you'll see a rectangular box that says subscribe in it. And you know what that does. Click on that guy and you'll be subscribed to the channel. Then if you click on that little bell shaped icon, YouTube will be nice enough to let you know just as soon as I post a new video. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. Just leave them in the comment section down below. Well, until next time. Bye.